Hi everyone, my name is Vanessa Rejaji from Financial Advisory and Intermediaries Department at the FSCA. Today I'm joined by my colleague in Tantan Tuli and we'll be addressing all the issues relating to annual financial statements that are submitted by the FSPs to the authority. Without wasting any time, let's get into it. In terms of Section 19 of Financial um, Advisory and Intermediary Services Act and Chapter 6, specifically Section 43 to 50 of Board Notice 194 of 2017, as amended by Board Notice 707 of 2020, all FSPs are required to submit annual financial statements. Annual financial statement must be submitted by the authorized financial services provider to the authority not later than four months after the year end of the provider. For example, if your year end is 28 February, you will have to make submission before 30 June or by 30 June. In a case where your year end is 31 December, you will have to make submission by 30 April or any time before 30 April. Submission of annual financial statements should be done on the e-portal found on the FSCA website. In a case where you are facing technical issues or technical difficulties, you will have to contact the FSCA. In terms of the quoted legislation, certain requirements are applicable depending on the type of the FSP, since the requirement differs. We have noted that many times there are confusions that can lead to FSP not submitting all the required information, which will be addressed on the um, following few slides. The applicable legislation for today's topic will be Board Notice 194 of 2017, which covers fit and proper requirements, Phase Act, FSR Act, as well as Phase Notice 82 of 2015. We'll kick off with financial soundness requirement for the FSP that does not collect clients' premiums or funds. The financial soundness calculation will be as follows. Total assets deducting total liabilities. Total assets of the FSP must at all times exceed the total liabilities of the FSP. Many FSPs are still under the impression that they can deduct subordinated loans from the total liabilities, which is not the case. Therefore, the FSP may be under the impression that they are meeting financial soundness requirements when they are in fact not meeting the financial soundness requirement as set out in Section 45 of the Fit and Proper Requirement. Please note that FSP that do not collect premiums can no longer rely on the subtraction of subordinated loans as from 1st April 2018. Moving along to FSP that collect premiums, when we assert the financial soundness requirements, those FSPs must meet the following requirements. General solvency requirement, working capital requirement, and the liquid requirement for financial soundness. Under the general solvency requirement, we have total adjusted assets, less total adjusted liabilities in order to determine the net adjusted assets. The net adjusted assets should always be greater than net adjusted liabilities by more than 10%. Failure to meet this requirement, the early warning requirement will be triggered. Those FSPs are required to inform the authority when they have an early warning requirement. Early warning requirements will be triggered by the FSP that is meeting general solvency requirement or working capital requirement by less than 10%. Many FSPs fail to notify the authority about the early warning triggers. Early warning does not mean that the FSP is non-compliant. However, failure to notify the authority as required by Section 49 of Board Notice 
194 of 2017 is deemed to be non-compliant. Let's move to Annexure A. Annexure A exempt FSPs from submitting annual financial statements that are audited. In order for the FSPs to rely on this exemption, Annexure A must be annually submitted with annual financial statements. We have identified the following issues in terms of Annexure A. Non-submission of Annexure A, Annexure A submitted but not completed, not completed fully or not signed. Therefore, we encourage the FSP to complete annexure in full, sign the annexure before submitting. And please note that the new system will automatically reject the submission of annual financial statements if annexure A is not completed or is not uploaded together with annual financial statements. We are encouraging FSPs to always remember to upload annexure A together with annual financial statements to avoid an issue where the financials will be rejected. Let's move to annual financial statements. The following issues were also identified when FSP submit their annual financial statements. The annual financial statement, in some cases, they were not signed and approved by either the director, member, or the sole proprietor. Therefore, we encourage the FSPs to ensure that the directors, members, or sole proprietor approve the financials by signing. We have also identified an issue where FSPs do not submit a full set of annual financial statements. For example, some annual financial statements are submitted without a balance sheet. In some cases, you find that the balance sheet is not balancing. Therefore, we encourage the auditors as well as the FSP to ensure that the balance sheet is included in the full set of annual financial statement, statement sorry, and ensure that the balance sheet is balancing. We also encourage FSPs to ensure that income statement, cash flow statement, statement of changes in equity, as well as notes to the financial statements are included in the full set of annual financial statements that is going to be submitted to the authority. We've also identified an issue around directors or members report. Where directors um, and members report were not included um, in the annual financial statement submitted by the FSP. Therefore, we encourage both the auditor or accountant as well as the FSP to ensure that director's report or member's report is included in the annual financial statements and is also signed and approved. The other issue is section 19.2 that is not covered on the annual financial statements submitted. Therefore, we encourage the FSP as well as the auditors or accountants to ensure that section 19.2 is included in the financial statements and is also signed. The same applies to the accounting officer's report and the independent reviewer's report. We also encourage accounting officers and independent reviewers to ensure that the report is signed and approved. And it is also included on the financials. The other issues is the issue of changing or adjusting cooperative figures for the prior year without any explanation. Therefore, we encourage auditors to submit a letter together with annual financial statements, indicating reasons as to why figures were adjusted or amended. The last issue will be late submission of annual financial statements without applying for extension. 
FSP can apply an extension in a case where they will fail to honor the deadline. However, please note that the extension request should be submitted to the authority 15 days before the due date. In a case where your year end is 28 February, therefore, you are requested to submit extension request by 15 June or any time before 15 June. In a case where your year end ends 31 December, you will have to submit your extension request by 15 April or any time before 15 April. We encourage all FSPs to ensure that in a case where they can't meet a deadline, to communicate with the FSCA through the extension portals or even by um, an email or a call, and we will direct the FSPs to the right portal to um, submit the extension request. Without wasting any time, I will hand over to my colleague in Kanka, who will take us through the remaining slides. And thank you so much for giving us time to present these issues to you. Thank you so much. Over to you, colleague. 